as the child looks closely into the pool of water. Water's true gift is revealed to him. Life. Water is life. Water feeds the shellfish and agricultural industries, which in turn feed us and feeds our economy with thousands of jobs. Clean water. The water we drink. The water that provides us with a quality of life that's enviable. But as the population increases, so does the threat to our life-giving waters. In recent years, untreated and inadequately treated sewage from failing septic systems has contributed to the contamination of our water resources. Our rivers, lakes, and groundwater serving our wells are being contaminated, and the health of our neighbors, friends, and families is being threatened. Hi, my name is Randy Hoffmeyer. Water quality is a complex issue. As a homeowner, you play an important role in helping to keep our area's water clean and pure. In fact, you own a tool that's designed to help keep our area's water clean, an on-site sewage treatment and disposal system, your septic system. A septic system treats wastewater to a level that can be safely disposed of. When properly maintained, an on-site sewage system provides not only effective treatment and disposal of household wastes, but it can last indefinitely. In this program, we're going to take a look at what a pressure distribution system is and how it works. In the second half of the show, you'll learn about inspecting your system and how to maintain it so you can avoid costly problems. A properly maintained system is going to effectively treat your sewage and save you a lot of money and headaches. But before you learn how to maintain your system, you first have to understand why you have the type of system you do and how it works. With growing concerns about the degradation of groundwater and surface waters, alternative systems have become increasingly common because of the increased efficiency in treating and disposing of sewage. A pressure distribution system is a highly efficient wastewater treatment system. The system is comprised of three main parts, the septic tank, the pump chamber with the pump, and the drain field with its reserve area. The septic tank stores and separates out the solids from the wastewater. The partially treated wastewater flows into the pump chamber and then is pumped under low pressure evenly throughout the drain field. The drain field disperses the wastewater into the soil and it's in the soil that the wastewater is naturally treated before returning to the groundwater. The septic tank is a watertight tank, usually constructed out of concrete. In the state of Washington, a two-compartment septic tank is required for all new on-site sewage system installations. Here's how it works. Household wastewater flows from the house into the first compartment through an inlet tee. In this compartment, household wastes separate into three layers. Heavy solids settle to the bottom of the tank to form a sludge layer. The lighter solids, like fat, grease, and paper, float up to the top, forming the scum layer. This separation process yields a treatable liquid wastewater layer called effluent in the center of the compartment. The wastewater flows out of the first compartment through the outflow T into the second compartment. Here, the separation process is repeated. From here, the partially treated wastewater flows out of the septic tank through a screening device and into the pump chamber. In the pump chamber is a pump on and off floats and a high water alarm float. When the effluent rises to the level of the on float, the pump begins gently forcing the wastewater under pressure to the drain field. The pump lowers the level of effluent in the pump chamber until it reaches the level of the off float, which automatically shuts down the pump. The effluent enters the drain field through small diameter holes in the PVC pipe and then filters through the gravel and into the soil, which treats it before returning to the groundwater. By being under pressure, the effluent is applied to the entire drain field area which maximizes the treatment capabilities of the soil. To get a better understanding of where and why a pressure distribution system is installed, we're going to talk with Kevin Plemmel, a sanitarian who has reviewed many alternative systems. 
Now, Kevin, when you're evaluating a potential building site such as this, what are some of the things you're looking for? Well, Randy, when a designer or engineer evaluates a site, he takes into consideration such factors as setbacks to surface waters, mm -hmm. setbacks to wells, topography limitations, and most importantly, soil conditions. Now, what are you looking for in the soil conditions? What we're trying to achieve here is a certain level of treatment before the sewage re-enters the groundwater. Mm -hmm. And if the soil type and soil depth are inadequate to provide this, an alternative system will be required. To get a better understanding of how a pressure distribution system works, we're going to talk with Mike Olson of Olson Backhoe, whose crew is in the process of installing a pressure distribution system right now. Now, during the installation process, Mike worked closely with the engineer who designed the system to ensure that it would be built to exact specifications. Well, Mike, I see that your crew has already installed the septic tank here and the pump chamber. Why don't you lead us through what happens to the wastewater once it leaves the house? Sure, Randy, I'd be glad to. Basically, we have all the raw sewage that leaves the house, enters the tank from this point right here, mm -hmm. goes through a large settling area in the major body of the tank, through a wall and receives a little bit further treatment, then on into the pump chamber. So there's two chambers here and then into the pump chamber. Correct. And once it reaches a certain level in the pump chamber, the pump will kick in and send it onto the drain field. That's correct. Uh -huh. Why don't we go take a look at the drain field? Sure. Okay, what we have here, Randy, this is the basic pressurized drain field. You can see the different laterals that mm -hmm. go out in either direction from us here. The effluent is pumped up from below, is pressurized out into these laterals where it receives further treatment and dispersal into the original soil. Now, it's required to have a reserve drain field area in case this main drain field should fail. It's also important to treat that reserve area just like you treat your main drain field, right? I'm glad you brought that up. That's a very good point. It's very important not to drive or build on the drain field or the reserve area. Where is the reserve area for this system? For this system, it's right below us in this area here. Let's take a closer look at a drain field. The drain field is composed of a network of perforated pipes placed in gravel-filled trenches in the soil. Effluent is pumped through the pipes in controlled doses to ensure uniform distribution throughout the drain field. The effluent leaves the pipes under low pressure through small diameter holes and trickles downward through the gravel and is treated in the soil before it returns to the groundwater. Now that you know how your septic system works, it's important to know how to keep it functioning properly. At the beginning of the show, I said that a home septic system was a highly effective long-term wastewater treatment and disposal system. The key to long-term effectiveness is simple routine maintenance, regular inspections, pumping when needed, and prudent use of your system. The owners of this house know they have a septic system and think it might need to be pumped. To find the design and location of their system so they can show the pumper, they check their as-built plans that they got from the local health department. Larry Kosher of Petunia Pumps is going to inspect the system to determine what condition it's in and to see if it's functioning properly. Well, Larry, I see that the homeowner has uncovered the manholes and the system's ready for inspection. Now, what are you going to be checking? When I come into a system like this, I always check the inlet and outlet baffles first to make sure that they are clean. If not, we clean those up really well. Mm -hmm. Then I go to the main chamber and I check the scum and the sludge layers to make sure the tank needs to be pumped. Now, is this inspection something that a homeowner can do themselves? Yes, it is, but they need to contact their local health officials first. Okay. While Larry checks the system, we're going to take a closer look to see what he'll be inspecting. Inside the septic tank, the sludge settles out at the bottom the scum layer floats to the top, and in the middle is the effluent that will be pumped into your drain field for further treatment. If the distance between the top of the sludge layer and the bottom of the T is 12 inches or less, your tank will need to be pumped. If the sludge level were to reach the bottom of the outflow T, your system would begin pumping sludge into the drain field, clogging the pipes and the soil. If this were to happen, you would need to replace your drain field, which is a very costly process. Your tank will also need to be pumped if the distance between the bottom of the scum layer and the outflow tee is less than three inches and or if the top of the scum layer is within an inch from the top of the outlet tee. Well, Larry, what did you find? Does the tank need to be pumped? Yes, it does. The scum layer is really heavy, and I'm afraid if they would have waited any longer, they might have had some severe problems. What's the rule of thumb on how often a tank should be pumped? Usually we recommend every three to five years, depending on how many people are on the system, mm -hmm and how they use their system. The important thing to remember is to have your system inspected on a regular basis to make sure that it's functioning properly. Besides checking the tank, there's some regular maintenance that needs to be done to the pump and the pump chamber. 
Even in a system that is in perfect working order, some large particles may pass from the septic tank into the pump chamber. All systems using a pump for pressure distribution are required to use either a screened outlet baffle or a screen around the pump to prevent large particles from entering the drain field. The screen is also used as an early warning system. If the screen plugs, it is a good indication that your septic tank has exceeded its capacity and should be checked immediately before any damage is done to your drain field. You will also need to have any solid material that may have accumulated in the pump chamber pumped out. Your pump chamber also has a high water alarm that will go off when your pump chamber becomes too full. These alarms can be located in a variety of locations, so if you don't know where yours is, check your operations manual. Inspecting your septic tank once a year, pumping when needed, and inspecting your pump chamber are important steps in ensuring a long life for your septic system. There are other steps, however, that are just as important, namely protecting your system from damage and using it wisely. Once you know where your septic tank, pump chamber, drain field, and reserve drain field area are located, it's important to protect them. Never drive heavy equipment like cars or trucks over your drain field. The weight can break the pipes and compact the soil, causing your system to fail. When landscaping, make sure that what you plant is compatible with your drain field. Roots can damage pipes. Construction over your drain field, or even laying concrete or plastic, can cut off the supply of oxygen to the soil. This lack of oxygen greatly reduces the ability of the soil to properly treat wastewater. Grass is the best cover for your drain field. Depending on your system, you may have one or more four inch capped PVC pipes like this one sticking up in your yard. This is a monitoring port. It's important that you do not remove it or allow it to be filled in. If you'd like more information on how to check your monitoring port, contact your local health department. Never use septic tank additives. Not only do these products not work, but some have been shown to be harmful, cause expensive damage to your system, and contaminate the groundwater. These products are definitely not recommended. The natural processes of your septic system are perfect for effective wastewater treatment. Be careful what you put into your system. Definitely avoid putting grease in the septic tank. It builds up quickly. A garbage disposal greatly increases the amount of suspended solid material in your septic tank that can clog your drain field. If you have a garbage disposal, use it as little as possible. Do not put materials that won't easily break down in your system, such as paper towels, diapers, cigarettes, or plastics. Practice water conservation. The more water you pump through your system, the more stress you put on it. This means simply using common sense. If you have a hot tub, don't drain it into your system. Let the water run into the ground. Wash only full loads of clothes, and distribute your washing throughout the week so you don't overload the system. Take quick showers instead of baths, fix leaky fixtures, and consider installing low-flow fixtures for toilets and shower heads. These simple practices will greatly extend the life of your system and allow it to operate at its best. Finally, divert water runoff and roof drainage away from your septic tank and drain field. The addition of extra water to your drain field area can lead to saturation. When the soil becomes saturated, it can no longer effectively treat wastewater. In this video, we've looked at how septic systems work, why you have the type of system you do, and how to take care of that system. It's easy to understand how septic systems are ignored, out of sight, out of mind. But the importance of a well-maintained septic system is obvious. By following the preventative maintenance steps outlined in this program, you'll not only be saving yourself a lot of costly repairs, but you'll be doing your part to help preserve our clean water resources. Clean water means that recreational and commercial fishing and shellfish will remain safe and abundant. Clean water means we can drink our well water free of contamination. Clean water means our agricultural industries can provide our families with healthy foods to eat. Clean water means future generations will be able to enjoy the precious waters of life that are all around us.
For more information about on-site sewage systems and proper system maintenance, contact your local health department.